Hey, this is Tommy Victor from Prom, and you're watching Loud TV. Feedback's been great. I mean, it really has been. You know, it's different. Like, uh, Ruining Lives, that song, it seems like a lot of the old, like, thrash people are really into that one. And then, you know, Turnover is more like, you know, a combination of all that. It's more, it has, like, uh, more of a groovy thing going on as well. So, uh, no, I mean, it's been fantastic. <laughs> Basically, because of the label, I mean, now we were signed to a, a label, and they, they they had this window they wanted the record to come out at, and uh, I agreed to that, and I needed to do that, and that's that's the way it is, you know. I need to, uh, you know, you can't always do it exactly you want. If I would be on my own agenda, I'd probably take months and months and months to do it and re look at and look at everything over and over again. This kept me on a schedule. I was like, you know, I wrote 12 songs, that's it, going on the record, bam, done it, you're going to do it. What it is, it is. And it actually turned out really well. I mean, through the grace of God, it's unbelievable. It's like, so um, uh, it was a, a challenge and, uh, you know, it's something that I'm pretty proud of, that I was able to finish it that quickly. Write it, record it, do the vocals, write the lyrics, mix, everything. So Again with Steve Evans? Well, he didn't work on the whole record. Uh... I went in with this kid, this uh, engineer, this guy Chris Collier, and we we did all the basic tracks, and then I took it to Steve to uh, produce the vocals. I cut the vocals with him, and then he mixed it. Yeah. No, I mean initially we were gonna have Steve do the whole thing, uh, and uh, some some time restraints uh, prevented that, and then um, he he agreed. He agreed just to do the vocals after hearing the basic tracks that I was working on with Chris, and he was fine with it. So uh, you know, we, we we needed to get it done, and it probably would have taken too long if we would have went back with Steve and you know and retracked everything. So uh, we we were working on the songs and tracking as we went along, and you know that's what it came out with. So you know, I'm really happy with the way that came out. It was like a, it was a good method of operation the way we did this thing. Some of them are, some of them aren't. I mean, it's like Windows Shut is like another, like, it, it's it's um, a post-punk song that has sort of like these this math metal thing into it and it has the big hook. I mean, that's not a fast song. I mean, and, you know, Remove, Separate, Self isn't that fast. I mean, then, then we have the hardcore thrashers like The Barriers and, you know, uh, Book of Change, Chamber of Thought, Ruining Lives are, are pretty up there in tempo. And I, mean, I like to do fast shit. I mean, it's like, you know, fast is cool. Yeah, and some riffs are really brutal, you know. Yeah, they're pretty Sometimes crazy. Sometimes like a death metal band, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like um, uh, self will run riot. Right. Or chamber of thought at the end of the album. Yeah. They are really aggressive, you know. It's pretty uh, aggressive. Yeah. Still young in your mind and. Uh, hey man, I mean, like I play guitar and it's it's. Uh, uh, I like to play cool guitar riffs and, uh, you know, as much as I like blues and. And stuff like that, uh, you know, I, I could still, you know, churn out some some heavy riffs. You know, it's just just the way I am. You know, and it's like, um, uh, I that's how everything starts, really. Basically, uh, when I, you know, I was on the road with Danzig, and then I I had my iPad and uh, Garage Band with this uh, this uh, Apogee Jam. It's it's an interface in there, and I would sit there like in a room like this. I'd be like, put it, put the click track on, go to 220, and be like, okay, what am I gonna do? I gotta play fast and get those down, and then then move it down to a different tempo, and you know, adapt to that. So you know, that keeps your chops up when you're playing to a click track. And years ago, you didn't know what you were doing. You're like, okay, blah, blah, blah. but now you have you know these tools that you could use, and you know they pump it up. And, you know. It's a new way of working for you. Yeah, but well, it, it isn't, and it is because years ago I had like a. a, a um, a four-track machine with tape, a cassette tape, and I would do the same thing like in a bathroom or whatever. But now, like you know, it's easier and then you know digitally to do it. And then eventually, you know, I'll pick those riffs out and I'll throw it into Pro Tools and uh, develop songs from there. Maybe 
Maybe I don't know. I mean, it's hard to decipher. I mean, I, I don't know what's out there these days, and you know, I just try. I'm just trying to like make good records and uh, try to do the best job I can, and uh, you know, just do what I'm told to do, and that's it, really. You know, it's like I, I can't. Uh, I have no idea what what the results are, or uh, I can't really rely too much on what the results are, neither. I can't. It's, it's pointless to me. Okay. Just music. Yeah, I mean, it is, pretty much. It's like the music, the performing, just trying, you know, you know, trying to do what I have to do, you know, to without, you know, driving everyone crazy and trying to, you know, be a decent person at the same time. Okay. So. As you said. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more living in the now. I think I, I like to I like to put it that way. Uh, it's a uh, the problem I think we have is we run around too much worrying about the future, and then we're all uh, keep memory keep all this stuff in the past that we did wrong or you know bad things that happened to us, etc. And that just confuses us. So it's just like I know I stay right now. You know, it's like you know oh, somebody you know. Like I'm talking to you or whatever, or trying to be more present. That's the best word. Trying to be present, and um, that that's been helping me, rather than uh, worried about past mistakes. I've made billions of them, and then you know in the future, I don't know. You know, who knows what happens? The, you know, the world may blow up tomorrow, so you know I have to keep that in mind. It's like you have to. You never know. You may not be here tomorrow, and that's important. To like live that way, I think. So uh, that doesn't mean you know party and and you know and and that at all. I mean, you know, so it, it means just staying present and having faith, pretty much. So that's that's how I've been uh, coping with stuff. I think it's like losing faith in in getting disappointed and judging yourself based upon other people and it's it's you got to walk through your fears and uh you know like i like, like i had like just sort of a self-centered attitude about the music business and uh what happens out there like i was saying earlier really has nothing to do with me i mean if i know i worked like really hard at something and i did that and i did the best job i can do that's enough like worried about what other people are gonna. I lived like that for years. It's like, why doesn't this person like me or like this or or you know like that's not fair. You know the world is completely fair. I think years ago I I would not think that everything is fair. But I mean we're exactly you, me, and everybody's exactly in the same the place that we're supposed to be. So knowing that, a lot of my decisions and and, and um, the things I did in the past were based on a totally false concept of things, a false, rea a bad reality. So you know, you know, it's like in, you know, just being too negative about everything. So you know, you can't, you can't function that way. There's no way you could keep going. And uh, you know, so uh, that's why you know I've had like these valleys and stuff in my career it's, that uh, were based upon the same, the fact that you know I was thinking like the like the world revolves around me and it doesn't so like anything any of the decisions I meant based on that were all wrong well Jason's been playing with me for a while Jason Christopher and um because Tony never did any touring with us because he said he was and then he wound up not doing anything so then Alexi Alexi was was uh, working with us, and then he found a regular job. So, and then, uh, but he's been in and out because he he had uh, some problems and uh, he broke his hand. So Art from Windsor Plague has was been filling in for Alexi, and then you know Art's doing. I mean, he, he's doing an amazing job. So these guys are. I mean, this is the best band I've ever played with. These guys are so amazing. So I mean, I've been. I mean. Either it's been Alexi and Jason or Art and, and Jason. These guys are the best. They're really good. So yeah, I mean that's like, that's what we've been doing, you know, pretty much. It's like that's been going on for like yeah, like two and a half years now. Yeah, but you don't have a whole big pile of all these prong songs in one place, played with guitar, bass, and drums from all the records with one sound and and done in this fashion so uh 
Uh, you know, the, the response from that's been fantastic, too. The, you know, Unleashed in the West, the, the bootleg. You can check that out on Bandcamp. I mean, so uh, it was just it's just one of those things. Why not do it? Like, we had some time off we were between festivals, like Hellfest and all that. So uh, it was like, let's go in the studio and do this and see what it comes out like. And it came out great. So, and then uh, people have been digging it. Yeah, I mean, we got a bunch of festivals coming up over the summer. Uh, we're playing like Bloodstock, Vakken, uh, uh, was it Metal Ways or whatever the hell it is. And then, um, yeah, man, so we're just, Prong has been moving ahead and keep doing it. Ruining Lives comes out in the end of April and May 13th in America. So, uh, single is out on vinyl, 7-inch, Revenge Best Served Cold remix on the other side. Thank you. Thank you.